Order now and we will deliver the entire collection for free anywhere you are in Nigeria. But hurry, this exclusive ShopX TV offer is for a limited time only. So call now while stocks last. The following was a paid presentation from ShopX TV. Okay, folks, I greet you. Welcome. It's another Friday, and uh, welcome to Journalist Hangout. I am Citizen Jones Usten. Now, today on the program, Damagun continues as acting national chairman, just as PDP plans to resolve leadership crisis in August. And later on, we'll share this with you. EFCC declares former Governor Yahya Bello wanted, as IG withdraws policemen attached to him. A lawyer and advocate for good governance, Liboros Oshoma, will join us for that discussion. But let me report I'm hanging out with Babajide Kolade Utitoju, BKO. I greet you. Citizen. I greet you. Viewers. Uh, BKO, we are joined by gentleman Dotun Oladikbo. I greet you. Good evening, sir. Okay, the team is ready. I hope you are. All right, our first story. Personable Governor Alex Oti of Abia State is having a good and smooth run, if you ask me, but not without nagging hiccups. The State Council of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, has pleaded with the governor to pay workers there the minimum wage as well as the wage award due to them. The State Chairman of the NLC, Obunaya Okoro, handed down the plea during a Thanksgiving ceremony. Okoro was full of gratitude to the governor and said, like Oliver Twist, he was asking for more. Gratitude, they say, turns what we have into enough, Jide. Yes, um, they don't even have to be um, as uh, estarsome, as the real Oliver Twist before, okay. before asking for what, as far as they are concerned, is legitimate. Legitimate needs. I I shudder to believe that in the very very tough economic environment that we find ourselves that some states still can't pay minimum wage. Oh, yeah. Abia is one of those states. Someone told me that even the minimum wage of 7,000, that there are some states that still haven't paid. In you this know, country, it, it, it boggles the 7,000 back then. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> when the minimum wage was increased to 18, to, uh, to 18, Mm. They couldn't pay. Mm. It went to 30. <laughs> Some can't pay. Some are only still pay. It was a governor, a, a North Central governor, a governor of one of the states of the North Central, that told me this two Saturdays ago, that some governors are still paying 7,000, minimum wage of 7,000. In this country? Yes. In a 21st century? They, they failed to pay 18. So people failed to pay 18. How do you expect them to come and pay 30? 30. So they are not paying 30. So Governor O.T. is being told now that, look, look around you. Look around you. You will see that in the Southwest, you, it is your state alone that has not paid the wage awards. Others are paying. Anambra was among the first mm. to do it. The first state to come up with a wage award was, was Kwara. OK. Yes. Abdurazak was the first to pay wage award, and he has kept faith with it. Mm. You know? He has no choice. Who? Of the course he has, has a no choice. choice. You mean uh, OT now? OT is being told now that, look, others are paying. What are you waiting for? Get their message clear. They may have praised him. 
You do that, you try to romanticize people in the beginning, I mean, so that they don't think that, oh, you came for a fight. Mm. So those guys are politicians themselves, the NLC people. They praise me, ah, you are paying salaries regularly by 28, latest you pay salary. But you've not, the minimum wage, you've not been paid. Yeah. Secondly, wage awards. awards. States are doing wage awards. You have not, you are the only state in the entire Southeast yet to pay wage award. I think that is significant enough that the governor should then sit down and look, you are governor to sort out the welfare of people. Mm. How are you helping the people to survive these difficult times? Set, set themselves, um, are you giving palliative grains? If you are not giving palliative grains, what again are you doing? Mm. That Abiodun, you may have all kinds of issues against him. I also think that he needs to fix the road mm. to my place before I start seeing him as a hero. But you must give him credit for even the cash disbursement well, that is yeah, been It's similar to the condition, uh, conditional cash transfer that has been given money to indigent, indigent students. Yeah. We, you saw that they, 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 yeah. they carried it yeah. in. And you know, they identified the, uh, the students who needed the most through their teachers. And they received a lot. And we saw the story, people were happy. Mm. That is what we want to see. So the governor of Abia has his work cut out. Yes, you do infrastructure, people will praise you. Mm. But man shall not live by infrastructure alone. But by? By other things. I don't know what you do. <laughs> stomach infrastructure. <laughs> you are not live. The idea of no. stomach infrastructure is, uh, is, is like an idea of a square cycle. Yeah. Mm. There is no such thing as a That's square cycle. <laughs> so when someone says stomach infrastructure, you cannot, you can't place it. There's, no, place it. there's yeah. nothing like stomach infrastructure. <laughs> It, yeah, it's, the, it's a funny two, idea. But, but for me here, if the NLC went this way, we wouldn't have uh, problems with it. I mean, if the NLC... You mean the approach? No, that yeah. is the national leadership. No, if the NLC behaved uh, like this... Yes, at the national, the national level. We yeah. won't have uh, issues with it. We, we really won't, but whichever way they have put it, like Biki was saying, mm. it's a demand. Whether they have couched it in flowery language or they decide to take ban and go to the streets. It's a legitimate it's, demand. It's a, it's a legitimate demand. Yeah. More so for somebody like Alex Oti, who a lot of us believe have been preparing himself for this job for several years. Yes. And coming from a sector where money is made, he was MD of a bank. Mm. In fact, at some point when he wanted to recontest, was when he left the bank to go and say, I want to face this. So a lot of expectation yeah. is on him. Great, great ones. Great ones. Because now people believe the savior has come. Yes, we can argue. I've not spent so much time in government. But what people want is results. Mm. People don't want to die before the gains of democracy will come to them. And Abia State has been in a lot of mess before it's coming. Be before now, yeah. And that now has put more weight, more burden on him. Most of the educational institutions mm. are not being funded adequately. They can't even pay salary. There are medical institutions too. Oh. Bad. So, my big is that this is not a work, matter. The workload is much. Much. But this is not a matter of you doing infrastructure. Let's do a roads project. Let's clear the town. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the process of clearing the town, people are even becoming more worried because those who cannot get their salary from government are selling things, and then you are clearing them off the road. Double <laughs> job party. So it's something that he must work on, and very fast too. Yeah. Otherwise, the the uh, Rika that welcomed him into office will soon die down. Okay, okay. And he might be in trouble. Yeah. 
All right. Governor Oti, we cannot but wish you well. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't pay for any more wages. You, you, if you do so, the people will all, always shout, Hallelujah. The, the, the uh, what do you call it? The game changer has come. So be it. Okay, then, let's go to our next uh, story. The Opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP, may be having its teething troubles at the moment, but the foundation is still intact, if you ask me. So arising from its much-anticipated National Executive Council meeting, the NEC, the PDP has shoved the resolution of its leadership crisis to August and has directed Ambassador Umar Damagum to continue to lead the party in an acting capacity. So let's uh, report that both former presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar and the FCT minister, Nyesa Mwike, were at the party, at, at the party, including some members of the G, you know, G5 group, which he, Wike, led against the former vice president. Now let's hear first from Damagum himself. We must also understand that Nigerians are in love with our party. And they see this party as their common home. They are anxiously looking up to us to bring succor and relief. It is expected that the decision and outcome of today's next meeting will strengthen our party, bring answers to the many questions in the heart of our members brighten our future and further reposition us for the challenges that is ahead of us. Dotun, I, I get the impression the, the, the PDP is telling you and I this too shall pass away. Well, that's what it, they are trying to do. Mm. Because um, the expectation when this meeting was going to be held was the fact that it would be very odd. But at the end of the day, what we saw outside were people who we expected would go into their room, that's the secretariat, have their quarrels and resolved and resolve them. Mm. But what they've, what they've done is to postpone the evil day. Okay. You, you think? Because, yeah, every party has rules in terms of when the NEC should meet, mm. when the NWC should meet. Those things are clearly stated. But for a lot of the parties, what we have seen have been breaches mm. because those who are the head and those who are struggling to keep them on sit them are afraid that once meetings are held, a lot Des decisions are taken. Yes, a lot can happen. That might, uh... Yeah, and that's what most of these parties are going through now. They don't want to run the parties democratically. When we go back, we'll see that one of the things that INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, has always complained about year after year, especially the before elections and after, has been lack of internal democracy yeah, within parties. The parties. Yeah. You see a lot of people running to court to go and say, this leadership produced this man, but it's, it has been unseated by a court order simply because the parties did not follow the laid down rules and regulations. What does your constitution say? That's why it was expected to be an article versus wiki meeting. Mm -hmm. For the two of them, one wants the chairman to go, another wants him to stay. But what they have done now is what in our own part of the world they will say. When two brothers enter into a room, and they refuse to tell themselves the truth, they will come out smiling. Yeah, come out smiling. Because they know that the fight continues ba ba outside. Backslapping. Yeah. 
That's what they have done. Yeah. You know, sometimes you wonder if political parties are run like this in, say, the United States, which we, we say we are aping. Well, you see, <clears throat> I really don't see what you've done wrong now. The, they need time to decide on who should continue to lead the party. The decision that um, Dr. Yocha, you took to withdraw this matter from court mm. came as a big surprise to them because it came on the eve of this um, uh, next meeting. meeting. Yeah. The fact that that case had been on in court was the reason they couldn't decide um, with finality on who should be the national chairman of the party. For as long as that case was in court, the court wanted um, the court wanted what's it called um, status quo ante to be maintained. Yeah, I mean, okay. Maybe the court will have said return IU to his position. So they didn't want to go the old hog, they were waiting. Then people like Wiki uh, were supporting Damagum, but in politics, a lot of horse trading takes place. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. the national caucus of the party, which is made up of former and current leaders of the party, had that meeting on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and at that meeting they decided that, look, the matter of the national chairman would not be decided at the neck. I knew it was finished. I knew that Damagum would continue. Because that is the most strategic organ of the party. Before big decisions are taken, they try to test the waters through the um, uh, National Caucus meeting. And yeah. those are the heavy hitters, big decision makers. Once they did not decide that Damagun should go, I knew that the neck would just be a formality. And then it was announced that after the uh, National Caucus made that the matter of leadership will not be decided at the neck. So at that point, Damagum won. At this uh, uh, neck, the leadership of the party was commended. They then said, okay, we will decide in August who will become the national chairman. People of the North Central, They've been pushing that mm. since your chairu comes from their place mm. and he didn't finish his term, it makes sense to let the North Central produce the next yeah, uh, national chairman. Yeah. But that is a geopolitical zone. And there are six geopolitical zones in our country. Other tendencies uh, would also come in in arriving at a decision. So. As uh, hungry as the North Central uh, politicians within the PDP were, they couldn't get everyone to back them that this is the time to choose a new national chairman who will come from the North Central. Mm. So now that decision has been moved. They said, okay, let's have our congresses and all that. And I think also that that makes sense. When you have congresses, you have arrived at the people, the delegates who will be legitimate voters at your convention or whenever you decide that, okay, you want to um, appoint, uh, you want to elect a new national chairman. So yeah, yeah. this matter has been deferred till August. We wait to see what happens in August. Of course, this gives time for a lot more horse trading yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to go on because it's a real battle for the soul of the party. People like Wiki and younger talks within the party, they don't want Atiku to gain control of the party. They believe that the party has been good enough to Atiku. 
Atiku has used the party tremendously. Yeah. He's been presidential candidate of the party many times. He's not the only person in the party. And he's not the only person good enough to stand for election. Mm. You understand? There are other people. So that will be playing the, the, the battle for the control of the parties is it's very key. significant mm -hmm. key here. because it will then determine who may actually the group that will control or have significant control of the of the national structures mm -hmm. of the party and from that point you can begin to sense whether people like wiki can be shot out whether people like Atiku uh, will, will get a rub of the green all kinds of possibilities will emerge after the national the national chairman of the party uh, is is elected and we get to see the tendencies that he represents yeah uh, no, so that you, you know yes i admit what he has said but then a national party like the pdp you remember one of them said the the chairman the acting chairman told us uh, this is the party supported by Nigerians. My mind goes back to the Second Republic where um, the then NPN, National Party of uh -huh, Nigeria, um, seemed to be streamlined. We knew more about the national chairman at the time, if you remember, the later yeah. Adisa Akiloi, Akiloi, and all other parties like that. But not anymore. At the turn of the 21st century, you expect, as you said in, in, in earlier on, internal democracy to, to take root. Well, unfortunately, what we have um, done with the parties is to make the president the national leader, putting him above the national, the national chairman. chairman and to make the state governors or whoever is the highest political office holder or appointee at the state, at the state level. level, the leader of the party. So whereas states have chairmen. Chairmen, who of, should, because a party in power should implement its agenda, agenda yeah. based on what they have promised the people. But what we have seen is a different thing. It's the governor or the president who decides for the party what to implement a lot of times. So it means the party has little or no say once the governor emerges. Little or no say. So, and so, and so when, when you hear something like, Governors are very powerful. What comes to that's, that, what that's, you? That's what, that's what it means. It means the governor is the party. That's what it means. So but are they helping the party? Well, so far we have seen what has, what has become of the party because the governors take the decisions. They decide on what to do. Whereas a party has its own booklet of promises to the people and which in the Second Republic was followed to the letter. Mm. If you are promising free education, how do we run it? The party takes the lead. If you are promising mass housing, how do you run it? Mm. The party ensures it is fulfilled. So now what we do with parties, especially because independent candidacy yeah. has been lacking, is to use this as it means of getting political power. It means to an end. Yeah. So the parties are there for them to use. And then the chairman too, whether at the, especially at the national level, also want a say because those who want to have the tickets of the party will go to them mm. and do rank candidate. Okay. So that's where they have the power. And that is where it is important, tying it back to what BQ said, that all of this will shape what will happen in 2027. And that was why I said what I said, that see, these people have just pushed their fight to the future. They are still going to fight it. 
Yeah. They are still going to engage in that battle. Okay, that's what because they, by, they are postponing it. The yeah, they are postponing it because at the end of the day, what has happened in the past few months has shown us that very clearly. At a cool body languages, I want to run again in 2027. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and like we said, some younger people are saying, no, you've had enough. Let us take over this party. Even those who are serving at the federal level in the government of the APC, mm -hmm. they know that once they leave that tough, just like we always say, if you allow an article to go into a primary contest with you, then you are finished. Good night. Good night. Go All right. Uh, but, but Nigerians are watching and waiting. Seriously. Uh, and so I, I wish the People's Democratic Party well. Um, and why not? Okay, we'll take a breather here. Um, take some commercials and return. Please stay with us. I actually came to pay the money for the recruitment consultancy you did for my company. Uh, I took two million. I just hold on. <laughs> I now collect dollars. What? Yes. I don't understand what's happening to Naira these days. So, so it's going to be two million times today's exchange rate. Uh, 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 doctor, wait, wait. Doctor, wait. Don't tell me you are one of those people who directly put pressure on the Naira and make it lose its value. You want to dollarize our economy and yet you pretend as if you don't know what's happening to the Naira. I've told you about how you abuse the Naira by spraying and stamping on it during your occasion. To deface and abuse the Naira as if it's not our national asset. How <laughs> about it easy? How? I will not take this. And neither will the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Task Force on Currency Abuse and Forex Malpractice. Take it easy with you. They are coming for you. Disease from economic sabotage. Or you will face the wrath of the law. The Federal Republic of Nigeria, with support from the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism, is set to host a two-day high-level African counterterrorism meeting in Abuja on the 22nd and 23rd of April 2024. The meeting, which is themed strengthening regional cooperation and institution building to address the evolving threat of terrorism, the meeting will bring together several presidents across Africa, 31 African member states that have been successful in preventing and countering terrorism and violent extremism. Distinguished attendees at the meeting will include His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, UN Deputy Secretary General Ms. Amina Mohammed, and National Security Advisor, the AU Commission Chairperson Mr. Moussa Faki, and Under Secretary General for Counterterrorism Mr. Vladimir Voronkov, National Counterterrorism Center, Office of the National Security Advisor, Announcer. Okay then, welcome back to our next story. Now, former Kogi Hemsman, Yaya Bello may be out of power, but he appears to be throwing his weight around. The anti-graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has declared the politician wanted for offenses relating to <coughs> economic and financial crimes. The EFCC has also posted uh, the former governor's photograph on its official Facebook page. Perhaps more depressing for the former first citizen of Kogi State is the withdrawal of all police officers and men attached to, to him. Now, get it straight. Former Governor Bello is a wanted man. Go that's a former, you know, he's on a watch list as well. Uh, Gide, your state is in the news? It's not my state, it's the former governor. Oh, here, here, here we go again. Uh, I really want the Abelo to be put on trial. If he not has just, if not just, deemed to have committed an offense. Just, just let me, since it's my state matter. <laughs> oh, okay, you are, you are owning this the matter. state. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go there. I really want as governor the Abelo to be put on trial. So that we can know the truth. And when we know the truth, as the Bible says, the truth will set us free. I've had a lot of stuff. I've had in this country people accused of stealing billions and billions of naira who are put on trial and they never got convicted. So even for a Abelos good, even for his own good, he should be willing 
to stand trial. Submit you get sir. you get the point. He should be willing to stand trial hmm. because it will help us discover some things. I am interested in discovering a lot of things about the way he ran the state, whether all of the money coming to the state he alone was just chopping. <coughs> we need to find out. You understand? I would have loved him to do what Ayodele Fawashe did. The FCC made a lot of noise about Ayodele Fawashe. They said, ah, we have notified uh, the immigration, uh, we have notified this so that he can, uh, uh, the Navy, mm -hmm. so that he cannot escape through the waterways. They said a lot of things. What did uh, Fawashe do? do? Fawashe decided to print a t shirt by himself. He went to the FCC. Oh, yeah. Arrest me. Mm -hmm. Arrest me. I don't come. Today, <laughs> he's moving around free. The same people who said, ah, no, we, we, we've notified uh, them, uh, immigration, all, even the court granted him um, leave to go and get Medicare abroad. He went, got Medicare abroad. He came back. He trusted himself. The matter was going on. Suddenly, the FCC lawyer said the judge was biased. The judge had to recuse herself, and they started Fauci's trial fresh. Fauci is ready. He's ready any day to meet the FCC in court. But the reason you cannot expect Abelo to do exactly what Fauci did is they are different people. Yeah. yeah. And the situations are different. According to Governor Yabelo's aides, former Governor Yabelo's aides, the EFCC never sent an invitation to him to come and face them at the headquarters for interrogation on anything. And you know why? The reason was because Yabelo had secured an injunction. So they knew that a person who has a restraining order, mm. you cannot... Mm with common sense, then write to him to come and face you because he will cite the fact that the court said, look, stop harassing this person and all that. The point that I'm making, is they knew that with that uh, order in place, they cannot compel him or get him to come and face them. Now, no matter how bad an order of the court may seem, what you need to do is set that order aside. You must set the, you must get the court to set that order aside. Once you set that uh, order aside, you can then move. But if you appeal an order, hmm. and the judge is yet to rule on the matter, even the matter of uh, of uh, uh, of service, they are yet to rule on it. You then proceeded on the eve of the sitting of the court to try to help yourself <laughs> by storming his residence. I mean, there are things that we cannot do. The EFCC, by the way they handle cases, allow a lot of politically exposed persons to get away. Because all it takes is to get a good lawyer. I'm punctual. They have such a terrible record against politically expo exposed persons. Mm. If I'm to sit here and talk about politically exposed persons who have defeated the EFCC, sometimes based on badly prosecuted cases due to carelessness. Honestly, we won't live here today. And look at even what happened with, uh, with um, a fellow Ibiraman, uh, for, uh, jo, uh, jo, um, Adoke, the former uh, uh, attorney general. The EFCC went to court. In open court, they admitted before Justice Kutigi, that indeed we didn't have enough evidence. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have loved um, Yabelo to go there. But if you didn't get an invitation, do you on your own simply go there? But the people didn't give him an invitation. They knew that he had a restraining order. And on the 22nd, the, the, the matter before the appeal court is supposed to be had. 
why wouldn't you wait until then? Because the judgment may even be in your favor. Okay. That's why people are saying, okay, there's a lot of drama about this. You see, the truth has to be told. Whether Abelo has stolen so much money, I don't know. Because I wasn't working with him. I could even be working with him and he would not let me know some things. But what we are saying is the law is the law. Even if the, um, the order of the court, you feel terrible about it, you must obey. Otherwise, we are joking with anarchy. We must obey. There are ways in which you can set aside some of those orders. We've seen people give such orders. And then you get a superior court to set it aside yeah. and you then proceed from there. Yeah. So this is the thing. All of this drama and all that, I, 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 don't, I just don't get it. Because it's not, at the end of the day, if they are not careful, the person that they've told us told more than that, it will get away. Because of the way they do their things. It's just, it's just the, uh, uh, funny. Dotu, in the past, we, we have, as he has said, we have seen prima facie cases being lost by the AFCC. So here we are again. So many of it. In fact, do you no. envy the AFCC chairman, Ola Ulukayate? Well, with the way he started and the promises he made, this is not a good situation for him. And he's a lawyer. Yeah, he's a lawyer. It's a very bad situation for him. Well, you already admitted that a, mm -hmm. a lot of the prosecutors in the FCC, they, are, uh, they take money from politicians. He said it. He said so. Abi, have you he forgotten? Said, you know, he, he said so. so. He said so. He said so. And that is not good for the, the, the agency. Yeah. It's not at all. Like Bikio said, April 22 is on Monday. Mm. Court of Appeal says, come. You have filed an appeal against a restraining order. Why don't you wait? Let's come I've here. read somewhere where even some senior lawyers said a court cannot prevent you from trying somebody or from arresting the person. I don't know where that came from. Because what we say to ourselves is, let's do it legally. Well, if what? a court can't stop you from what? arresting... arresting. Why do courts issue arrest, arrest warrants? Mm. Because it's, it's an op opposite kind of thing. Mm. You must. Th thankfully, we, we have a lawyer joining don't you know? very, very shortly. Yeah. So, so we, we need to go back and see also that there have been such restraining orders yes. in the past. The Minister of Defense is enjoying one, Belu Matawale, is enjoying one now. The court has restrained the emphasis from arresting yes, him. I, I remember. For 13 years. Mm. Peter Odili enjoyed it. We hear some wicked pre prevented the FC from arresting the sitting governor in River State through the courts. So many of them like that. Abdulaziz Yari, former governor, enjoyed the same thing. So the big question people are asking is, why the interest in this case that will make you not to wait? It does and then a few days. A few days. And then political win. Meanings have been read into it. Yeah. The AFCC's lawyer is the lawyer of a political party that Yaya Bilo's party defeated in the Kogi state election. Mm. How did you even allow that to happen? Because these are things you must take into consideration. In some cases in the past, that was why they lost. Okay. The, uh, the, the opponent of the person you are trying and who, whose lawyer you are using is also the FCC's lawyer. Yeah. You, you need to avoid How do you reconcile this? How do you reconcile it? All right. Uh, thankfully, we are joined uh, at this point by a legal gentleman. He is a lawyer and advocate for good governance. Let's uh, meet and greet Barista Liboros Oshoma. I greet you, Liboros. Welcome. Yeah, I greet you, Citizen Jones, and I greet um, members of the panel. Uh, thank you. So what can you tell us now? <laughs> I have uh, listened to <laughs> yeah, members of the panel, and um, and uh, when uh, any time EFCC starts this, they are Gestapo, uh, melodrama. Um, I just laugh um, because for some of us that have seen the beginning, we are no longer entertained by this, you know, melodrama 
uh, that TFCC is displaying, really. Uh, gone are the days when we see FCC, you know, visit in a Gestapo-like manner, uh, politically exposed persons, and would think that, yes, something good is coming out of this. Um, for me, for me, I think all of these are, it's like EFCC waits for a, a governor, the moment he exits office, they, you know, come invite him, and then the drama will start. Uh, some persons have said, the next thing they will say, oh, you stole so much, or give us our own. And then the mm -hmm. case that starts, the case that starts with um, so much fanfare and drama mm -hmm. will now take a snail, a snail speed. If you remember Citizen Jones, um, or Tupac Bega Daniel, just the same way EFCC, you know, charged him for mismanaging, I think, about $60 billion. Mm -hmm. Midway along the line, that charge was amended quietly to $200 million without mm -hmm. the press, you know, knowing. That was in, as far back as 2007. What became of the case today? Um, this Yaya Bello's matter, if you remember, um, sometimes in February, Yaya Bello filed um, a case at the Kogi High Court in suit number HCL 68M 2024. Yaya Bello applicant and the EFCC responded. Issues were joined in that matter. EFCC sometimes in uh, February filed a several paragraph affidavit in opposition and a preliminary objection to that suit. Uh, for, it's an originating process for enforcement of fundamental rights. And at the end of the day, um, I think on the 17th, that same day, the uh, Kogi State High Court delivered a judgment restraining the EFCC, like Otitoju has said. And one would wonder, really, we say prosecution starts from investigation. Um, I read in the news somehow EFCC is um, charging Yaya Bello to court the next day. And I asked myself, there's what we call the doctrine of, you know, presumption of innocence and audio tarant pattern hearing the other side. Has EFCC taken Yaya Bello's statement? Have they, you know, taken his statement to hear his own side of the story? Or they will go to court, charge a man, you, you, because the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is clear. You charge a man to court without a statement from him, without hearing from him, and at the end of the day, is that not a way of boggling the case? Is that not mm. a, the beginning of the end of that matter where you have charged somebody, you have not even obtained a statement from him? You say, oh, we're taking him to court the next day, you know, we're in his house, and then um, the next thing, if they had arrested Yaya Bello, and then they took him to court the next day, is it after prosecution that they will now begin to obtain statements from him wouldn't that be a, a point of objection when the trial eventually begins that um, most of these uh, issues were preemptive? You know, I, I, I think that um, while I agree, I agree with Otoju and uh, my other brother that there's politically exposed persons, if anybody is found culpable, if anybody is corrupt, there's need for us to dutifully investigate such persons so that at the end of the day, the society will benefit from this, the taxes and the funds that is being pumped into, you know, the administration of EFCC. And all this kind of, um, you know, jamboree that we see, I can, like what you said also, I can start to mention it, starting from, like what I said, or Tubak Ben Gandane, um, uh, uh, Jews of Kalu, uh, recently, Anambra State Governor, Willie Obiano, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, Fai Oshe, uh, Adoke, all of this, including the NMPC, uh, was it Corey? There was this man's name. EFCC, you know, the same fanfare. At the end of the day, there is something usually not tidy about the way these things are done. And you give, you create a loophole for these persons to escape. Wouldn't it have been tidier? What's the hurry? Wouldn't it have been tidier? You vacate this order of the Kogi State High Court. You're on appeal. You were to, the Court of Appeal was sitting yesterday. You vacate that order, you know, extend the invitation to this um, gentleman and takes obtain statement from him. Maybe after obtaining statement from him, there might even be some incriminating, you know, uh, 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 positions that you did not advance in your mind to before. And thereafter, it gives you a robust opportunity to approach the court. You would have tidied up your case, crossed the T's and dots the I's. Or like this haphazard ways of going to court because you want to please people that you're fighting corruption and at the end of the day the man gets to court 
is uh, granted bail, and that becomes the beginning of the end of the matter. I, 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 I as a lawyer, I have never seen this kind of uh, uh, style before, where you arrest somebody, you have not even obtained a statement from him, you charge him. He's already in court the next day without a statement, and then it is when prosecution is going on that you now begin to obtain the statement, and then you now say, no, you need to go back and investigate that matter. Wouldn't that be prejudicial to the uh, accused person? And we know that in criminal law, if there is any, any doubt at all, any doubt created in, in, in the mind of the court, it is resolved in favor of the, of the accused the person. Accused, yeah. And because the accused person is consistently presumed innocent. So I, I, I do not understand this time. There is no need, criminal prosecution, there is no statute of limitation to criminal prosecution. And that is why we consistently say prosecution starts from investigation. There is no need for this hurry, this fire brigade that we are seeing. I would have expected that no matter how much, no matter how long a former governor runs, if the FCC is ready to catch him, like their slogan says, they will certainly catch him. Yeah. I also would I advise you know, the Ayabelo and co., let them pursue this, their matters to a logical conclusion, and then discuss with his uh, lawyers, who mostly definitely will be senior advocates, and then let them approach the court, just like Fire O'Shea had done, approach EFCC from, like, um, I want to quote Ozekome. Ozekome had, you know, consistently informed Nigerians that care to listen that EFCC is a paper tiger, and that he, he has taken them to court 11 times, and he has defeated, defeated them. Why? Because of this Similarly, loopholes that they intentionally created. That is why the uh, current chairman, during a um, uh, screening, would say that prosecutors intentionally frustrate cases. Yes. Even investigation, too, with what we have seen now, it's obvious that with this kind of investigation, definitely such a matter will not go. Let's, uh, uh, Libros, let's um, look at this matter this way. There are some aides of the governor who are saying that. Because he had a restraining order, he felt that it would be disrespectful of the court for him to hand himself over to uh, the EFCC. Do you agree that that that, um, no. that action was right because he had a restraining no. order to not uh, um, agree to be arrested? If you look at the the body of that judgment. The courts, the um, uh, Kogi State High Court, if you permit me to read uh, a, a part of that judgment, the Kogi State High Court, in granting that order, said, another is hereby granted a the fundamental right of the applicant to liberty and freedom of movement and fair hearing by restraining the def defender by themselves, their right servants of privy from continuing to harass threatening to arrest or detain in any manner whatsoever, arresting, dealing, or prosecuting, persecuting, not prosecuting, persecuting the applicant on the basis of the criminal charge now pending before the Federal High Court, without prejudice, without prejudice to the powers of the said Federal High Court. Yes, there is a, a restraining order. Without prejudice to that matter that is before the High Court, there are procedures also for charging. I also, despite our restraining, uh, despite the matter at the High Court, despite this restraining order, what the court should have, what the EFCC should have done at the appeal court would have been to argue the fact that the their act empowers them to prosecute after investigation, and that if there is no way they can prosecute without obtaining statements. And so, if they have restrained without obtaining statement, then it will be impossible, a legal impossibility for them to prosecute. And to that extent that they pray the court to prosecute, to, to that extent they pray the court of appeal to vacate this restraining order. Once that is done, you can now extend the invitation to the man to come answer to the petition or the investigation, preliminary investigation that you have conducted. But without doing all of that, you just... Um, you, you go to his house in a Gestapo-like manner and say you, you want to charge him the next day, and yet you have not, because the matter is coming up the next day, you have not obtained a statement from him. He can be a politically exposed person today, even if we don't like him, 
It can be liberals or showmen or uh, to you tomorrow or citizen Jones. And if it is you, nobody will even come out to speak. So, and that's why I think that no matter this, the, the situation we find ourselves, be it high and low, there are procedures that must be followed. These right. procedures must be followed I, I to the latter. To... Especially, especially when it concerns the judgment of the court. Will it be that they weren't sure that they would get um, a favorable judgment? Could that be the reason they moved a day before the, they were supposed you to appear preempt, before the court? You can't preempt. If you believe that you have done all there is to do, and you do not get a favorable judgment at the Court of Appeal, there is the Supreme Court. You can still go upstairs. So to not preempt, the court even gave you a leeway, a window, without prejudice to the powers of the Federal High Court to prosecute you know, to carry out that criminal investigation, a uh, criminal charge. But the question is, this person that you are charging, have you heard his other side, at his own side of the story? Have you obtained statement from him? Can you prosecute without obtaining statement from him? And now that he, there's an order restraining him, you need to vacate that order so that you'll be able to uh, obtain statement from him to be able to prosecute him. It's as simple as ABC. We just make it complicated. All right, Liberos, uh, mind, I, I understand what you're saying. Section 33 of the Constitution talks about the right to life, you know, uh, what, what should happen when a thing like this comes up. Let me reconcile what you have said with the fact that refusal to submit to arrest or detention is a crime in itself. You see, the, the problem here is not refusal to submit to arrest. If a court restrains Citizen, Citizen Jones mm -hmm. from holding me, and Citizen Jones now come, despite that court order, mm -hmm. to say, I must hold you, don't you need to vacate that order first, first. that is restraining you? Yes. Or are we saying that, the first look, time irrespective time. of how that order was gotten, irrespective of how it was gotten, the mm. first thing is that it's an order of a court of competent jurisdiction. Yes. And mind you, EFCC had joint issues with the applicants in that court. EFCC were they there. Mm -hmm. They filed a counter and a preliminary objection. Mm -hmm. a, an order and a judgment was given. EFCC has appealed that order. Yeah. So what is the hurry? In that case, if I were him also, I would say, well, I am protected by the law. You can't come and ha harass me as if I am a, you know, a fugitive and despite the court. So if we cannot obey court orders, then why do we need to go to court? We should all we resort to self-help. Yeah. Yeah. If the there court. was no court order, if there was no court order restraining the EFCC, dated 20, on the 17th of February, I would have, I would be among those that would say, Yabelo, go like Fire wear a singlet and say EFCC, I'm here. I'm here. But as a lawyer, as a lawyer, I am restrained on the ground that there is a subsisting order which has not been vacated by a superior court mm. and also by the procedure for prosecution that you must obtain a statement from that accused person. Except that accused person volunteers not to give any statement. Then it is recorded that the accused person was told in clear terms that he has the right not to say anything, and he volunteered not to state, not to, uh, uh, he decided not to volunteer any statement. So all of this will be recorded by the court. But a situation where you have not done this, you suddenly woke up, woke up after, mind you, since February, when the FCC joined issues. They did not go to Yaya Bello's house. They did not, and mm -hmm. even then, they have admitted that they did not extend invitation to him. To come answer, and then the man went to court and got an order. You were sleeping, he got an order, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden, you remember, Oh no, we have power, we even need to use the army to break into his house. <laughs> Roger, <laughs> so that, Roger, that this same thing was issue. done. Uh, well, let, 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 let me done. ask, they broke um, into his house. Let, let, let me ask, yes, that one, of the th one of the reasons people usually give for not um, going to surrender themselves a lot of times is the manner in which they are interrogated and the condition what do you say to our you, you, agencies on this that's why i i will uh, i support the current chairman from pillars i get the current chairman being a lawyer has consistently admonished 
you know, um, members of the commission not to be hostile in interrogating uh, uh, suspects because these people are presumed innocent. innocent. Do you know, let me share an experience with you. I have a matter with EFCC. For two years now, I have been begging the EFCC to declare the suspect that have absconded with my client's money wanted. They told me that right. there are a right, long Liberos. procedure. Sorry, Liberos, we are hard-pressed for time. Procedure, they have not... To know. <laughs> yeah, we are hard-pressed for time. But thank you very kindly. Thank, thank you very, very kindly you for your... I forgot to mention the fact that um, Aimee Philly got an injunction against the EFCC. Mm. Okay, uh, okay. In, in respect of his terrorism charge. charge. Okay. See, today that has not been vacated. That's oh, why oh, they're all right. charging with terrorism. Exactly. Okay, we, we must go. But <laughs> let's thank you, uh, Baba Jide Kualade Utitoje, for, for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Uh, Dotun Oladipo, many thanks for your time. Thank you, too, One sir. more time. Yes. Uh, many thanks to Liboros Oshoma, an advocate for good governance. We are done. If you missed any part of this program, not to worry. Join us later tonight at 11 for a repeat broadcast. And, of course, on Sunday, we expand the field for you from 1.30 to 3.30. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Citizen Jones Usain. Bye-bye now. Take care. Una come greet us today. Two of them thought they walk off follow party my play. She did, sir. Uh, uh, she did, sir, but she know. Wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news.